guys, sorry about the delayed uh, voice over there, just deciding on what to say. Uh, I'm using Nova Launcher on my S3 at the moment, it's quite good. Uh, performance wise, this is the beta version, which comes with a few additional um, extras, 1.2, beta 3. Uh, The latest, uh, the best of which is at the moment, the new app animations and um, things added in, in sort of visual sense, uh, jelly bean and slide animations are the new ones. Uh, ice cream sandwich has always been there, obviously. The jelly bean one sort of mimics the entry and exit transitions of Windows of uh, jelly bean, which is um, quite nice, but I like to have. Uh, speedy response uh, or speedy animation so I just leave it on um, Nova's own slide animation which is quite nice that you just saw there when windows open and uh, close they slide in and out which is uh, quite nice widgets wise snowstorm weather which is free on the market this is um, I quite like this it gives you quite a lot of information uh, sunrise sunset average speed and so on. Um, weather Eye is another good one, a bit more minimal though, but looks quite similar and has skins as well. This is simple calendar widget. You get quite a lot of, um, well, not many options in there. There's a button to set it up here, which I've hidden, um, but you can configure it to show various different calendars and so on. This is minimalist text, these ones down here. You can customise those how you want. I've just got them configured to show text so they can load various uh, things. Quick access to um, usage meters and battery and so on. Um, that's also free off the uh, Android market. Simple uh, calendar is also free. ROM wise I'm on one and light 1.5. <laughs> which is based on LFB, which uh, was released a few days ago by Samsung, or probably earlier on this week actually. Uh, main difference on LFB compared to previous versions of Ice Cream Sandwich on the S3 is they've added a brightness slider to the notification bar. There is a patch on one AMS ROM. If you don't like the slider, you can disable it, but I quite like having it there, which is... Uh, which is um, good addition and obviously missing the hold the notification slider from the S2 which Samsung removed for some reason but I have an idea on why which I'll show you um, in a moment when I load up a game. Performance wise it's very smooth, very slick, even the stock non-custom ROM is just as good. One AMS ROM is uh, doubly good because you get customizable quick toggles here via the Quick toggle setting, uh, quick panel settings app. You can choose what buttons are on there, um, remove them, change the order of them, and so on. Only one that's missing is the power management, uh, power saving setting, which is this one here. So if you use power settings or power savings, then uh, you might miss that from the listing here. But I never use it, so I'm not really bothered. Just give you some information on the. Uh, ROM. LFB modem version is the latest one. I found that to be quite battery efficient as well. I get over, um, well, I easily do a full day and come home with 50% left from work, which is um, quite handy. Uh, the notification slider being disabled, I have an idea about that. If I load up a game, uh, let's load up. Shadow gun. Now, normally when you're in a game, you'd have to home key out and then go into your application or to view emails or notification slider or, or a bar or so on. But in this S3, the LFB update, Samsung have enabled or allowed you to sort of swipe down on the top of the screen, whether it's the side or the top and show the notification bar and I think that's that's very handy because you can easily see notifications you can adjust the brightness 
if you're in a game and you don't want a uh, home key tab out, it's just much easier to um, access that area. And I think that's quite unique to Samsung as well, actually, I've not seen on any other um, phone. Let's get out of there for the moment. Customizations wise, uh, these icons on the dock here are my own, which I've made. Um, if there's enough interest, I'll put the link in the description with an update. These are all gesture based as well, so they load folders. Uh, leading onto that, the folders are via an app called Smart Shortcuts. I think I bought that ages ago, I've had it ever since. It's really useful um, at adding folders to, uh, well, around the home screen, just makes things a bit tidier. The folders on the app tray itself are built into Nova. They're not, the entry and exit animations of the folders aren't as nice as um, Go Launch Reacts, which I've been using for a while, uh, but the way, the way it's laid out is more OS friendly. Well, there's more, the theme is sort of, looks more ICS uh, stock, if that makes sense. Other things you can do, uh, all the stuff that I've got customised, we've obviously got mobile loading which I've bought, flashing um, ROMs, modems, uh, kernels and so on. CPU spy is quite good to see if, um, what speed your phone is running at most of the time, so if you're finding your battery drains faster, you can use this app to see what speed the phone has been running at most. Uh, you don't need to be rooted to use this app, which is quite good, and you can see what speeds are not being used as well. In conjunction with that, you can use another app called Better Battery Stats. So if you do find you're um, consuming a lot of battery, you can uh, see what apps are using the most battery or have been over the um, period since it was last unplugged or whichever of those criteria you set. Other cool stuff, uh, titanium backups obviously um, a must for anyone that's rooted. Backup and restore app and app data uh, to exactly how it was, which is uh, very good if you have to factory reset your phone one day or you lose your phone and you get a replacement, then you can restore these backups in your apps and settings are back exactly how they were, which is um, very handy. <laughs> Another cool app which I use is and FTP. So, for example, if I take a screenshot of a part of the screen, load up the screenshot, and with and FTP you can configure it to upload it to your own web space uh, or a free FTP server or wherever, and then you can link to it online afterwards. So, if I upload that. That's it, it's gone. Then I can just delete it straight off the phone, go to the browser on the PC and uh, share it with um, blogs, forums, whatever. Uh, another good one is ES File Explorer. You can use it to browse Bluetooth shares, network shares. So I've got my computer added already there. So if I browse to a folder, You can browse files, trans, uh, transfer files between your phone and the PC and so on. It's all touch based so you can long press, uh, you can um, enable multi-touch, select an item, cut, copy, paste, flip between them and, and so on. That's very good. Another good one is uh, SyncMe which you can use to synchronize both ways between your PC and phone and this supports external and internal memory. Uh, speaking of memory, this card phone does support 64 gig cards. I've got the SanDisk one in there at the moment and that is formatted to XFAT, so it will support file bigger than 4 gig. Uh, media wise, I use BS Player Free, recently updated with some themes and things, but you can uh, stream HD content from your LAN PC to this and I'll play one of my Blu-ray rips 
Frozen Planet. This is 1080p, um, and this is streaming over wireless N. And as you can see, it's smooth. Another good thing on the S3 is obviously you get additional options now, so you can adjust the notification ringer and media volumes just by pressing the span uh, the cogs icon. You can see how sharp this is, 1080p on, uh, on the AMOLED HD display. The kill will feed the pack for several days, but then Very they nice. will have to resume the chase. Speaking of Wi-Fi. S3 Sports Jawband Wireless, uh, or uh, joining of channels, or whatever Samsung call it, essentially gives you faster wireless end connection speed. So I've got Jawband router downstairs connected to 5G on the 5 gigahertz band. I get 150 megabits per second. That results in speeds of up to between six and eight megabytes per second, um, transferring stuff over wireless to and from PC. Uh, reading's obviously a bit faster, write speeds are a bit slower, uh, as expected. Uh, audio output is, again, very good. Bundled headphones are okay, they're not bad, they're better than the S2 ones, but I've got my own uh, Phonak earphones for that. Uh, I use power amp. Which, which I find um, very good. The way the folds are managed um, are excellent. I don't really like tagging stuff. I prefer having them in folders and the file names named correctly as well. So they're all sorted alphabetically in their own respective folders. Um, likewise, I use Winamp on the PC in a similar fashion. So this was uh, this was quite welcome. Uh, Power Amp is not free. It's a couple of pounds, but uh, well worth the, um, the cost. Uh, what else is there? I think that is about it. Browser-wise, I use Quick ICS browser, um, mainly because I prefer the top bar here, and you can easily manage. Um, you don't have the Samsung's tab management screen like you do if I show you that so that's Samsung's one, you can't swipe the tabs away you have to press on the little minus there to close them whereas on Quick ICS it's more stock uh, like when you add and remove tabs it's simply just swipe away which is much easier and quicker as well um, what else So that is about it, I think. This one showing TV upcoming and so on. This is TV show Fabs, which is free on the Android um, Play Store. Uh, this is very good. I like use it to keep tabs of uh, what I've watched, what I haven't watched, and what's coming up over the next two weeks or so. Uh, and that is about it, really. Um, Thanks for watching. If you like it or got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer.